suppose it's not that bad. Hello and welcome to another Embrace Your Outdoor Space. My name is Tommy Cross and I've come into the dry from the wet because the weather here in the UK has reverted back to type. It's gone up lovely, overcast, wet, beautiful summertime weather here in the United Kingdom. But as miserable it is outside, we are going to bring the garden indoors today because it allows us to fall back on one of those wonderful jobs at this time of year, which is planting out, potting up, and getting the most out of your outdoor space. Now, this time of year, I would be in a rush to plant one of my favorite things in the garden, and that is the strawberry, or the strawberry. And as wonderful as shop-bought strawberries are, especially if you're buying organic produce, I think strawberries for most of us is our first encounter with food growing. It got me thinking, the limitations of growing sometimes can be a bit of a frustration, especially if your beds and borders amount to nothing more than a balcony, or if your plot is nothing more than a pot. If you're growing strawberries, they're not without their pitfalls because they spread, they like space, they like lots of food. How can we get more going on on our terraces? Well, the easiest option is to grow upwards. Growing up, reach for the gardening stars. Reach for the stars. I went skip surfing and I grabbed myself out of the skip this piece of pipe. Now ask obviously the skip owner's permission before you do so. This is a piece of twin wall pipe. It's quite rigid and it's also a perforated pipe so it's got a few slots in there already which is going to be really useful for drainage. And what we're going to do is we are going to use that as our strawberry planter. We're also going to throw in a few pollinators as well because I want to get some vertical colour and we're going to get some vertical flavour as well of our strawberries. And we might add a few other friends in there as well so we can pick and graze. It's a bit too much length going on there. So we need to cut this down first in order to make sure it fits in our pot. Now, I've obviously got a very big pot here so I can afford to put a relatively large piece of pipe in there. This is six inches in width. If you've got a smaller pot, something like a piece of down pipe or guttering pipe will do the trick to get those juvenile plants in there. The most important thing is we've got some space to add some soil. First, we have to cut the pipe down. You can use a hand saw, or if you've got access to power tools, you could always use something like a circular saw or a reciprocating saw. If you're going to use power tools, make sure you wear the protective eye equipment, so a good pair of goggles. And let's get this cut down to size, and then we can start growing up. Now we want to make sure this stays in place, so I'm going to add a few eyelets in the bottom. They're going to be our anchor points. So these are just kind of growing wire eyelets that I'm going to screw in because this is plastic. Nice and easy to do, but you can do it by hand. Try and get a bit of purchase on it first, if you can, just to press it in. And then if you want to avoid any attrition on your fingers, you can just lob the screwdriver through and then completely mess it up like I just did. In order to protect my dainty little fingers, all I've done is insert an Allen key. My dad always makes this joke when he says Allen keys. He goes, Allen keys? Who's Allen keys? It's not joke. Awful. I've put an Allen key into the end of the chuck, tighten it up. I've taken the drill and I've put it on a lower speed setting and that just means I can insert through the eyelet and tighten these up double quick time. So I'm gonna put about five or six of those and they're gonna act as my anchor points. So. Thank you, Paul, for the edit. We would put a few more in there and they're just gonna act as sporadic anchor points when we put the gravel on. And you can bring those up to just below root ball depth. So we don't want to be interfering with the depth of our plants. So we don't want those coming up too high. So we've got to anchor this in position and we're going to do so by just using some loose free draining stone. Because this is contained, we want to make sure it is still free draining, but we want it to retain some moisture. So I'm gonna add a little bit of soil, compost and gravel. Mix that up. Now I could do that by hand. It's gonna take me quite a long time. Or again, I could get a drill, and chuck on a whisk. And I don't mean going into the kitchen and grabbing, in my case, my partner, my wife's best. Well, maybe I should. No, not again. <laughs> you need to whisk with a bit of power. No, what I mean is a plasterer's whisk. This is a really easy way to mix everything up to make sure that you're getting the blend of growing medium that you want. So. And there you have it, one fresh batch. It's looking good and it's ready to grow. Fill around the base first. 
You can hear that satisfying tinkle as it's going down the pipe. You can see even though I haven't finished compacting the soil up in the base, and even though the pot is leaning towards the camera, this is still staying in position thanks to those anchors that we put in the bottom here. So now we have this whole stack of potential planting space where before we were limited to down low. And I've got some trailing strawberries as well. So you'd normally put these into a hanging basket if you wanted some edibles up high. In this case, they're gonna cascade across the outside. Now, strawberries aren't without their pitfalls. When this does become laden with fruit and it does touch the ground, the slugs are going to latch onto it and they're gonna get there before you even seen that strawberry has come to fruition. And the other thing as well is the moisture contact on the ground. If it's left to linger too long, it can start rotting. So having them up here means we're gonna alleviate the slugs getting up. And it also means that we're not gonna get too much ground contact with the strawberry. I've got some juvenile plants here. So how do we get them into our pipe? I would use something like this. So it's a core drill bit. Core, core. So unnecessary. Uh, it's a core drill bit, and you can buy these from most hardware stores, fairly inexpensive. And if you have a look at that against the size of our pot, absolutely perfect planting aperture for our new strawberries to grow into. So let's get drilling. What you're going to do next is just agitate the soil inside, because as we plant further up, the loose soil is gonna drop in and around the plant because we wanna make sure that it has contact with the root system. And another top tip as well, make sure you've got somebody holding this because we haven't anchored this in with any firm fixing. So if you've got somebody else or if you're able to use the drill one-handed, hold the top and make sure it's nice and stable and you can cut into the pipe much easier. So you're gonna loosen up that soil around the inside of the pipe and then pot in and press. Now I have given these a real liberal dose of water in advance so they're nice and wet means they're slightly heavier as well. So they get it on daylight today, they well and truly moistened the root system. When that soil drops in around it, it's gonna to stick to that root system. It's also gonna to help to anchor them in too. Now, as before, when it comes to using power tools, make sure you wear protective eye equipment, especially when you're using a drill. So when it comes to drilling your holes, try and drill down in a spiral manner so that there's never a hole directly opposite. That way, if you've already planted up, you're not gonna drill into the back of the freshly planted root system. And also make sure you've still got integrity in the pipe that you're drilling into. So we don't want to overlaid in this because they're all going to be competing for the soil that we've put inside. And we also don't want them to get too drowned out. So we want to make sure every one plant that we put in has plenty of space to develop and grow. Eventually, when all that foliage starts fleshing out, and all that fruit starts coming out. Now I've got some labilia here as well, and these are plug plants. I'm going to draw slightly smaller holes. So we're gonna flood this top to bottom with color. So I'm gonna take some of that stray soil off, make sure we don't damage the root system. I'm just gonna compress that softly to make sure that square peg goes in our round hole. You'll notice also that I've given these a good thorough soaking as well to make sure that they're nice, full of moisture, and now they're going into that new growing medium. I'm gonna give the top of my planter a crown it deserves, a crown of Campanula. And that's gonna trail over beautifully. The bees are gonna to swamp to this. It makes for a pretty sexy haircut. They're all gonna kind of purple rinse. Give this some time, get that labilia start to flesh out, fill these voids, the strawberries will start fanning out. I've got a big bare patch here, I've got a naked patch across the back. And I thought, well, we can carry on going round or we get some more vertical color, scent and aroma. And behind me, I've got one of my favorite plants at this time of year, Star Jasmine, or the bouquet this thing throws out. It's sweet, it's almost like honey. I love it, the bees love it, your garden will love it, but you've got to have somewhere sunny in order for it to grow because it loves the sun, but it also loves to go up. We can grow it on the back edge of this column here. And the way to do so is by using those eyelets that we showed you. We're gonna run those up along the back edge. That's gonna give me my scent, wonderful sight, and all of that height. Wait a minute, this isn't a full eyelet. How am I supposed to use my drill trick with this? I can't use an Allen key, but I can use a household key. No, this is a genuine little trick. And if you do have just a hook eye as opposed to a full eyelet and you want to screw it in, and you want to save your fingers, put a key into the chop, tighten it up, make sure the hole will go around the hook and then slowly pull the trigger. 
So I put a ladder of diagonal eyelets running up the back here. I'm just gonna thread up some garden wire. I've done this very quickly. You can spend a bit more time yourself to make sure this forms a perfect ladder. Now, I'd love to have done that, but not blessed with time today. I know it doesn't look the prettiest, but thank goodness for this, because it's gonna hide it. What I am more concerned about is that this gets off to a good start. So you can see, as usual, tickle those roots, and then we're just gonna carefully take some of those lead stems and just put those behind our wire. And you can see already, my rather haphazard approach here is being hidden and it's being masked by not only this foliage, but also this wonderful flower and the smell is just exquisite. Now, the best way to make sure this stays in full health, as well as the other plants that we planted, is make sure they're watered and they're also fed as well. So a good organic soluble feed. Now you can use something like a tomato feed on your strawberries because that'll be full of nutrients. And I mentioned earlier on, they have a hungry appetite, the strawberries. So if you keep them well watered, well fed, in a good sunny spot, everything here is gonna grow and it's gonna put on a feast for the eyes, but also a feast for your plate as well. But we've got plenty of space down here to flood out as well. So I'm just gonna get a few more strawberries. Do you know what, I'm gonna be a bit of a renegade because we have got some nice free draining compost in there and I am a sucker for it. I'm gonna throw in some lavender, French or English. No. <laughs> no, they don't get on. Good old English lavender. Ah! Again, I'm not sure you press enough in, so our root ball height is just underside of the brow of the pot. Turn that soil in around. It doesn't look too magnificent right now, but it has this wonderful crown of Campanula training labilia as that starts to fill out, flank across the sides here, full of color and foliage. And then we've got our strawberries, which are gonna give us our crop and our bounty. And down below, a mixture of pollinators. And then we've got our sumptuous strawberries at the bottom as well. So a good balance on one side. And remember, we've got our tracheosperm as well. So I've got a whole rich aroma of that lavender and those sweet tones from that wonderful star jasmine. So what are we gonna do with it now? Where does it go? It goes in a nice sunny spot. And the virtue of it being in a pot is that you can rotate it so we can make sure that everything gets a good balance of sunshine. Today, we don't need to worry about watering it because it is throwing it down. But if it doesn't start raining where you are, make sure you water it and also feed it. You give it good organic, soluble feed and the virtue of how this pipe is the fact that you can pour in from the top. And if you want to make sure everything gets a good sprinkling, use a rose head on your watering can and just flood the outside eventually it'll find its way down to the bottom but you want to make sure you pay attention to these guys too as well because remember the more you feed it the more they'll latch onto those nutrients and the more you'll see that flower and eventually that fruit as well and then in about two weeks time here because we've got some pretty lousy weather as soon as the sun comes out we should start seeing those flowers and then we should start getting that fruit to appear eventually this will be a feast for the eyes and a feast for our plate and who doesn't love a strawberry especially with a little bit of cream Now, on a serious note, if you are looking forward to growing your own yourself, or perhaps you've got a bit of a horticultural horror show and you need a few tips, don't forget you can always ask questions down in the comments section down below. And if you're enjoying the content, don't forget there's a little button next to the comment section that says subscribe, so you can always press that too. Keep an eye out for our forthcoming videos, and don't forget to hang around and check the link out at the end. The link, lick, mm. link out at the end of the video. Mm.